everybody. I'm Chef Paul. Welcome to Back Burner. Um, I am a food service director at Colorado Academy for Sodexo, and tonight's episode is Thai chicken and coconut rice. And basically, we are going to be very similar evening of instruction like a stir fry. There's a lot of knife work for all our vegetables. Um, when we make our rice, we'll incorporate some coconut milk. And I'm going to demonstrate just two different ways to do the chicken tonight because if you're a larger family, it's probably a better idea to use the stove in the oven than to uh, do it all on the stove top. And we're back. So I tried using the AirBud for uh, a microphone, but perhaps that didn't work. So I'll repeat what I just said. Uh, tonight we're gonna be doing Thai chicken stir fry, uh, Thai coconut curry rice, and a chicken curry. So there's three different kinds of curry. There is a red curry, a green curry, and a yellow curry. Typically yellow is the mildest, and the hottest is actually the red. Um, I have run into some people who go back and forth on that. So when you do a curry from scratch, you want to saute up a curry paste. And because I didn't think everybody could get their hands on curry paste, uh, we went ahead and encouraged everybody to buy a curry sauce that's all ready to go, okay? So first thing we're gonna do is uh, get your oven going to 350 if you wanna do your chicken in the oven. If not, um, get your pan on the stove. So I'm gonna grab my chicken breast. All right. So you'll notice here I have two cutting boards. Um, because we're on uh, live, I don't want to scrub a cutting board in front of everybody. So I've got a board right here on top that's just for chicken. And then underneath, I've got my board for my vegetables. Okay. So here's my chicken breast. And uh, this is a good size breast from the store. I want to cut off the fat. I'm going to trim this out right here. Okay, I got a little bit of a bloodline right here. Just going to cut that out. Now, I want to cook this kind of in a large chunk. So, like the stir fry, we cut a very fine dice tonight. I'm going to cut it in three strips. Now ahead of time, I do have all of my uh, vegetables have been washed, my hands have been cleaned, everything is sanitary. You can see here, these are much larger than our stir fry night. Okay, now I'm just gonna remove these items. wash my hands really quick. So you can see right here, I have prepared chicken ahead of time and I have put the curry on it. And I did this because with our family size, doing it all on the stove um, will take too much time. And then I thought, I'll cook it during the show, but then I thought, might as well show you what I'm doing. So I have my chicken pre-cut, and remember I'm gonna show you how to do it on the stove as well. I've got my oven set at 350. I'm gonna set that in there and I'm gonna set it for 30 minutes. Now in my pan right here, 
I've got it on, I'm going to put it on about four. I've got my chicken diced right here. I've got my sesame oil. And the chicken on the saute pan and in the oven is going to cook while we're doing everything else. Okay. Um, let me not start the chicken yet because the rice is going to take a long time. I'm sorry about that. So I didn't find my favorite Calrose rice. So I've got uh, Nishiki, which is a great sticky rice. I've got measured out here, uh, pre-washed uh, one and a half cups. Now here's the trick. I've got coconut milk that I'm going to sub for part of my water. Typically with sticky rice at this altitude, I do one and a half cups of rice to three cups of water. So instead, I've got two cups of water and one cup of unsweetened coconut milk. It's also called coconut cream. And I want to stir that in. All right, we're going to take this over to the stove. We're going to crank this up. We're going to bring this to a boil and then let it simmer. All right, so in the meantime, I've got my sesame oil here. And I'm just going to let that get hot. Now let's, I got a question. The portions for the rice, uh, the instructions, I kind of don't pay attention to on the bag because of our altitude. So I use one and a half cups of rice and three cups of liquid. Typically I use water. In this case, I used two cups of water and one cup of uh, coconut milk. All right. So we have lots of things to saute tonight. Um, I would like to go back to the stove for the chicken. This is on nice and low. I got my rice started right here. And I'm gonna listen for this while we uh, go over garlic and things like that. What I don't wanna have happen is to have this race up and get all over my stove because that would really smell. So I'm kind of keeping an eye on this because I don't want it to boil over. I've got some chicken in the oven and let's go back to the board. So right here tonight um, we have shallots, scallions, ginger, ginger root right here, garlic, I got some sugar snaps. I got a uh, red bell pepper, asparagus. This big thing right here is bok choy. And we will not use all of this. In my shopping list, I said to get two, but I did not realize they would be this big. So we'll use about half of the bok choy, which is cabbage. And I've got some cilantro. So these ingredients are kind of typical of most Thai food. And let's get started. So one trick for our scallions, our green onions, is for a garnish tonight, I want you to cut about the width of your knife, knife about one inch, and do that twice. So this is a little uh, restaurant trick. We want to flatten these all out. And what I'm going to do as carefully and as narrowly as possible, I'm going to slice these so I get really very, very thin strips. Okay, so remember I'm keeping my fingers back. I'm keeping my thumb tucked. I want to push these down. 
and I want to make strips as thin as I can and I don't want to win any races just want to be really careful here and these will be a beautiful little finishing touch but we need to uh, put these in ice water and what will happen is these will curl up and in the restaurants I was in we used to have to do about a quart of these a night for service and we keep them in ice water all night and we'd finish our dishes with them so you can see I've got really thin strips now right here I've got a pan a little bowl with three ice cubes and I'm gonna fill this with cold water And we're just going to leave this right here. I can hear my rice, so let's head over here. It's just starting to froth up. I'm going to take a tasting spoon because I love coconut. Mm. And that's got a really nice mild coconut flavor. If you like a strong coconut flavor, you could probably put two cups of coconut milk and one cup of rice, but I prefer it kind of gentle. All right, so that's starting to come to a boil. I'm going to cover my rice, and I'm going to turn it down really low to one because I can hear it's ready to go, okay? Um... Why don't I get my chicken on the stove? I want to do this nice and slow. Uh, that's not quite hot enough, okay? So we'll wait on that. Okay, let's come back to our scallions. Now, while half of our scallions are in ice water, we are going to trim the ends of this scallion right here. The white part of the scallion has the most flavor and is the strongest. And when we see cooks who are throwing out this piece, um, we usually ask them to not throw that out. And if we get into a discussion, uh, if you take this white piece and chew on it, it's much stronger than if you took the end, the green part, and chewed on it. So I had to do that a few times. Okay, so I've got my scallions. I am going to cut them as thin as possible with my thumb tucked and my fingers down. I'm not gonna worry about the pieces that are rolling all over because if I worry about those, I'm gonna stop my focus on my hands. Be careful as you get near the end. Okay. So I've got my scallions done two different ways. Those are impossible to pick up. If you did not get a chance last week to join us for breakfast for dinner, that's been posted on the back burner playlist on CA YouTube. All right, uh, garlic. We've got our garlic. Remember that this is the root, grows up this way. I just wanna take maybe three of these. It's a good size. I want to cut my end off of each one. Okay. 
now what I need to do is peel this. And if you've watched us before, if I smash this carefully with my palm up, this will pop right out. I think I need to hit, nope, that's good. There we go. All right, now I've got my three garlic cloves. And this is a, <clears throat> excuse me, a great way to chop your garlic. I come straight across. I got my fingers down. I've got my thumb tucked. Now I have at times left my garlic this chunky. Um, I prefer to taste my garlic a lot of the times uh, and I'll toss those with potatoes. But for this, I want to give it a nice mince. So I'm gonna line these up again. a nice mince on our garlic so put that aside take my paper towel clean my board a bit and because my garlic is very sticky I'm gonna rinse it off I'm gonna rinse off my knife really quick and I'm pushing away from the blade. I don't want to come this way towards me. I want to push away from me just to get that garlic residue off. All right, now let's, this is a shallot. This is a good size shallot. I'm going to cut both ends off. Now I've got my chicken in the oven tossed in my curry sauce and I think I'm getting ready to start my pan seared diced chicken in my pan. So let's head over to the stove. I can feel my oil. So we're just going to let this brown. And you can see I've got five people to feed, so I cannot fit the equivalent of five chicken breasts in this pan, which is why we have it in the oven. I want to check on my rice. Great. Okay, my shallot. My shallot is uh, really big. So what I want to do, similar to an onion, is I want to cut it horizontally first, like so, and then come straight down, keeping my fingers back, keeping my thumb tucked. And then come straight down. Now when you get to the end with this size piece, you can just lay it on its side. Ooh, that's strong. Wow. That is a good shallot. Ooh. So, because this is such a strong shallot, I am going to move it away from me 
until I'm ready to use it. I'm crying. I love you people. All right. Whew. Want to take a look at our onion over here? You can see how it's starting to curl up because of the cold ice water. If you use regular tap water, it will work. You got to use ice water. Okay. All right. Ginger root. This is our ginger root. Um, we can scrape this with a spoon to get this skin off, or we can use a smaller knife, which I'll grab. This is called a bird's beak. These are really sharp. The blade is right on this side, and typically you bring it towards you like this. The ginger root is oddly shaped, so sometimes you're gonna have to cut around these little arms. But the fresh ginger for this dish makes a big difference. All right, so now I'm going to take my ginger root, cut it in thin strips first, as thin as possible, lay it on its side. We're gonna mince this up. So I have fairly equal parts of garlic, ginger, and scallion. I might have a little more scallion, but that's okay. So I'm thinking a good tablespoon of each. I'm gonna check on my chicken really quick. So it's starting to cook through. It's not turning brown very well, so I'm just gonna leave it there. I'm not gonna disturb it too much. I wanna check the oven. And that's the other uh, roasted chicken, similar techniques. Uh, let's see here. I've got a red bell pepper next. Got this pre-washed. Remember um, our shoulders, we're going to cut straight down. And the pepper is almost smiling at me. Two eyes here. Almost got a perfect one. So I like to cut the shoulder and the bottom off first, and I set the pepper up on its side, and I want to cut all this out in one shot. So I'm going to come straight down one time, lay it on its side, and I'm keeping my knife horizontal to the board, and I'm rolling it, and I'm keeping my hands out of the way. Okay, so we get that out in one piece. I'm gonna cut this in half. And I'm gonna do a nice large dice with this red bell pepper. It looks really beautiful. Then I switch it to 90 degrees.
keeping my fingers back and my thumb tucked. And my pepper's done. Now I'm gonna finish up with these two pieces. Now I've got some asparagus and I like these rubber bands. I keep these all over the house. Um, but when you trim the asparagus, if you leave the rubber band on, then they won't fly all over the room. So I come straight down one time and I can put that in my scraps. <clears throat> Now I've got my asparagus here, and I'm going to do a bias cut for my asparagus so that it's a bit different, gives a nice presentation. Okay. Now, for our family size, that's about all I'm going to do. Got about two cups there. Next, I have my bok choy. This is uh, part of the cabbage family. Grows like this. Lots of outer leaves you'll recognize like in a regular cabbage. So I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to open this up, and this is far too much for me to fit in my pan. So I'm going to take about half of it, save that for later. Now I've got these nice tender pieces in the middle. So what we're going to do is just check check the tips to make sure they're not brown or gray or torn and you may need to chop those off these look really good because this piece is so large i'm going to split it right down the middle maybe the second piece here now what i want to do is just really large chop like about an inch All right. The next two, the last two things we have are our basil and cilantro. Let's go over and check on our chicken. I'm gonna turn these over. <clears throat> Basically, I have this on about four on my stove and I am allowing it to brown slowly so that I can have other things going at the same time. So I can talk to you so that I can chop up some things and it's not rapidly, rapidly cooking. I wanna check on my rice, it looks awesome. Ooh, that's hot. I want to take, stay right here. I'm going to take a fresh spoon. Now I don't want to, when I, when I test my rice, I don't want to stick my fork in there and move it all around. You want to let it naturally cook, so don't mix it up. Very nice, mild coconut flavor. Rice is still a little sticky and needs to be cooked more. All right, so let's check out our basil. Just 
just going to pinch off each leaf and the buds as well. Those have great flavor. Okay, so I want to take my biggest leaf and put the rest of the basil inside on top of it. And roll it up. Now I'm going to Julienne this one time this direction. Fingers back, thumb tucked. This will give us a nice julienne of basil. See that? Smells great. Okay, so now for cilantro. I have a very large bunch here, which I'm not going to use all of. This is beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I am going to tear off probably a quarter of this. Okay, so the stems on cilantro we've done over before. You don't want you don't want these big ones in your mouth and get, have them get stuck in your teeth. So what I like to do is I'll grab it right here and just pull it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Let's try this. Okay, so now, like this little tiny piece is okay. Um, we want to chop this up. So I want to push it together as best I can. And just like the basil goes straight across. Kind of comes unraveled in my hand, so I have to be careful. Let's push it back together. Now kind of go back the other direction. All right, so we have a nice rough chop of cilantro. And I'm just going to throw that in the same container, about equal parts, about two tablespoons a piece of cilantro and basil. All right. So now we're about ready for some action. I'm just going to clean up my board really quick. Okay, so you heard the timer, and our chicken is about ready to be checked in the oven. So, what I did was, this is the curry that I picked up that I have uh, in the instructions. Now, with these sauces, It's great if you want to make this stuff from scratch at home. You would take yellow curry paste, some shallots, some garlic. You would saute that up with your curry paste. You would um, put a little fish sauce in there, and you would hit it with coconut milk. Any question? So what we did was we kind of played the advantage here. 
of pre-made sauce because this show shouldn't be more than an hour. So for us at home, there's five of us. You can see my chicken came out nice and white. So as far as timing goes, this chicken seems ready. This chicken, as another demonstration, is not ready. The rice is relatively close. But with timing, what we're going to do is I'm going to turn my oven down to 200. It's hard to time things at home, just like it doesn't work. So I'm going to bring the temperature down in my oven so that I can hold my chicken and not have a panic attack. All right. So let's check the rice again with a crushed spoon. That's really good. And it's right about there. And I know that I need to still cook my vegetables, so I'm gonna turn my rice off. I'm gonna leave it here. I'm gonna leave it covered, okay? I've got my chicken here. My oven is now at 200, so I'm gonna put my roasted curry chicken in the oven to hold it. All right, so now I have my big saute pan. This is gonna get kind of loud and we'll do our best. Um, I'll talk a lot louder. So basically, remember with these pre-made sauces like we talked about with the um, Chinese stir fry food we made, these are ready to go. So I don't need to put it in my pan and then let it boil for 15 minutes. It's going to be too salty. It'll too much of it will evaporate. So basically, bring it up to temperature in the pan with your vegetables, and you're ready to go. Okay. These are really convenient. They're really good. If you want to make it from scratch, uh, it's kind of a lengthy task. I've got my handy dandy tongs, my favorite pair because they're nice and narrow, and my wooden spoon. I've got my sesame oil right here. I'm going to put in about a tablespoon. You can see that move across on that hot pan. Now these four ingredients right here are considered aromatics. Okay, so the uh, chopped garlic, the chopped ginger root, the chopped scallion, sorry, scallions, and the um, shallot. Okay, these are all considered aromatics, so typically they would go in first. Okay, I've got a nice hot pan. These are all going to go in together. So to save myself from making you dizzy by spinning around, I'm going to put these all together for one shot into the pan. Okay, so here we go. And I will, we're going to move kind of fast here. I've got a nice even heat. I want to keep everything moving. We 
We have a lot more to add in, so I don't want to brown these necessarily. I want to make sure that they're cooked. That's nice. Okay, the next thing I'm going to reach for are my um, red bell peppers. Now, while my red peppers are going here, I'm just going to move my chicken around a little bit in this pan. Just moving everything around a little, even browning. Okay. Now, let's come back over here. I've got my sugar, my sugar peas. I want to... I didn't do this ahead of time, but I want to pick out anything that looks a little rough. So I like to keep these whole. So what we're going to do is throw these in towards the end. And next, we're going to throw in our asparagus. This chicken is almost completely cooked blue. Just gonna let that go. Next I have my snap next I have my snap peas. And my cabbage. Or my bok choy rather. So we really, there's a lot of cooking going on here. So a lot of these vegetables are very, very delicate. The bok choy and the snap peas are really just needed to be heated up. You can see the, it's kind of wilting a bit in here now. Very pretty. So let's check on this chicken. The chicken's cooked all the way through and has nice brown color. So I'm going to add that to my pan.
So remember we had two different ways to do the chicken. We did part of the chicken on the stove and we did another, most of the chicken for my family because of its size in the oven. So now we're gonna add all the chicken together in with the veggies. You can see the nice bright green colors from the peas and the bok choy. So now I want to finish it with my sauce. I'm going to probably put about a cup in. I have not put my herbs in yet. I want to bring this, uh, I want to bring my sauce up to temperature. I want to turn my stove off. And now for my finishing, I want to add my basil and my cilantro. I waited till the end to put those herbs in because I really want them to stay strong and I don't want them to cook out. So here's a, here's a look at our scallions that we put in ice that are nice and curled, okay? So now we're ready for plate up. When do we add curry to fried chicken? Um, if you're frying your chicken in the pan, I would just throw it in with the veggies. Um, I put mine in the oven just so that it would incorporate some of that flavor. You could add uh, a tablespoon or two to your saute pan. That would be great. There's no real wrong answer there. So, here's our plate up. I've got my coconut rice. Oh man. I've got my chicken and vegetables. Now remember, you worked really hard on this. So let's plate it up nice. I'm gonna have to wipe that up. Some optional ingredients we have for the dish. We got some roasted peanuts. 
Here are our scallions. And our, another optional piece was uh, some sriracha. I don't think everybody needs it. I enjoy it. The curry is hot. And I think that should do it for tonight for our Thai chicken curry. I'm gonna check the questions really fast. All right, I wanna thank everybody for joining me, Chef Paul on Backburner, and I hope everybody has a great week. Enjoy your family dinner. We'll see you next time.